Right, well on my way back to England, um, taking the car early morning to pick up the airport um, in France here, I came across this owl dead on the road, been hit overnight obviously by somebody travelling, very sad, but rather than waste it, let's um, mount the bird and see how it looks when it's mounted up with the wings upright and just coming into land. I'm going to do it very basically, and all I need is a pair of a tweezers, a scalpel, scissors, some pliers for the wire, some wire, uh, fiberglass wool, and foam for the body, and the borax, borax, sodium borate, or a washing powder. You can get it in America called Three Mules Washing Powder. It's quite harmless, not going to, you could even get it onto food and wash it off and still eat the food. We've eaten meat off uh, many animals that we've um, mounted in the past. And I've already made up a little base for it to go onto. When it's fitted to this, I will fit on some more um, moss and so on later, and a pair of eyes, of course. In this case, they're all already coloured, though usually I paint my own. Right, there we have the basics then. Well, the first thing I need to do is to peel away the skin from the breast. You notice I've already pulled away some of these fluffy white feathers. We don't want to get a mess of them. There's no need to get blood on them. We're only going to preserve the outside of the bird. Not any mess. So keep it as clean as we can. So I've just nicked the skin and I'll peel it back as carefully as I can so that we can open up the skin over the bird like this. Uh, it's been frozen and it's only just thawed out, so I should just be alright to do this. I'm careful. It's a very thin skin on this bird, so we've got to go carefully. You don't want to tear holes in it. So peel it back and as you go along, just drop a little bit of the borax in to help ease back the skin. And all the time it means that when you're working the skin, you're working the borax in. Tactoderm isn't the thing I do much of these days. If I find a specimen that's going to be wasted and just rotting by the roadside or whatever, I'll make use of it and try and preserve its beauty for you, as I hope you'll see. This is the old traditional method, very cheap to do, and it does work. So before any of you write to me saying, oh, how long do they last and so on, I've got pieces of 25 years past that I've done in long-term past, and they're still just fine. And all animals, from foxes down to birds to fish, the borax works very well with them. We don't need to use uh, formaldehyde. Uh, only very occasionally with certain animals just in the paws or areas we can't get at. The idea is to remove all of the meat and get the skin off absolutely cleanly. You can see I'm now working down from the breast of the legs, pushing the leg upwards and at the same time using my fingernails to pull the skin down like socks around your ankle all the way down here to remove it right down to the leg here. Well, that's when you've got the skin right down to the knee joint. Then we go in with a pair of scissors because there's no meat below that. We can get in there, get underneath, and slip off that, get some borax, put it straight there, and pull it back inside the leg, making sure there's plenty of borax inside that leg immediately, because we want that to, to really get into the, the skin. Now I've got to come do the same the other side. I have the other side out, here's the leg ready, and I get right down to the bottom here, scissors through there, push them right down, slip off, Immediately put in plenty of borax inside that leg, a hollow part there, so that we know it's going to be preserved. And there we are, that's that part free. Now I have to work around the back of the bird here, so plenty of borax each side, all around in there, and gradually push my fingers right the way around underneath the bird so I can right the way through there. Now we come to the tail, we've got the tail uh, right peel it right down and I've got to take the knife now and very carefully just go around here cutting away the, the fat and the tissue so that the feathers, the tail feathers don't all fall out on me and I don't want any meat left either so very carefully mind your fingers so the, the, the borax is quite harmless more likely to do yourself a nice thing with a knife than the borax and cut that away there trim away any any meat, we'll do that again in a moment, make sure it's all clean and then immediately before we do anything else, plenty of borax around that bit, push it back in again and that bird is now lifting up, as you can see it's, it's clear to push towards the wings. So now I'm going to work up and around the wings here, up and around the wings and indeed up and around the neck here as well, so again 
keep the borax going. It helps you to grab the uh, skin. It also makes sure that you're working the uh, borax into the skin all the time. You see now I've worked out the, um, the wing, pulling that right down to the elbow joint. Again, keep plenty of the borax going in and around on the skin. And I've now got to very carefully, this is the hard part of this on the wing, is work around this elbow joint so that the skin comes right up and around those, those feathers there. Now you may have to just use the knife carefully here. At the moment I'm managing to get away with it, but sometimes in the bird you've got to use the knife just to peel the skin away there. At the moment, with my fingernails, this is coming quite nicely. You can see that's happening there. It's coming away quite cleanly. Again, a bit more borax. Not over, there's no mess, there's no gore, there's no it's not a, a horrific thing. We're just using what nature has left behind uh, to recreate and to, to look at the beauty of the thing again and how it enhance its beauty again. So right down then, I've gone right down now to the, the final joint. Again, make sure there's plenty of borax and we'll snip that off. There's no meat down there. It's just bone. There we go. So all the borax is in there. That's ready and preserved already just about. Now I'm going to come off to the other side and do the same. And again you can see now I've got down, both the wings are out, look, and I've got all the way down there on the other wing. I can just snip that off. Yes, it's a shame it's dead, and that's nicer to have seen it flying around, but if it has happened, that's life, and uh, it is roadkill. Now, another difficult part, and we're coming down to the most delicate part now possibly, and the only time that is a little bit messy, um, is trying to get the head out, and we've got to clean the head. But apart from that, the basic skin is done. So now what I've got to do is go in there and try and peel back the skin around the bird's skull. We've got to go right down to the beak. I've got to get right round here and reach my way down to this beak if we can. Not easy to do because the owl has a big skull. So this is where you may have to use a scalpel very carefully just to ease away the skin as it comes around the skull here. When you think back, all of the famous artists and scientists in the past have suffered, all the famous scientists and artists in the past have um, studied anatomy, usually on dead human beings, let alone on animals. And Stubbs, the famous horse painter, was well versed with the horse anatomy, so, so that he could actually sculpt one straight off and draw one straight off. He knew the inside of the animal so well. That didn't happen by looking at books, it happened more by actually looking at the animal itself. And if we're going to study nature, we've got to get down to the bare bones of it, literally in, that, in this case. Right, I hope you can see that now, but I've now removed the, um, the head from the skin all the way around the skull. Look here. Right, the eyes are there, all the way down to here. And look at the way the eyes are looking. That's interesting because they're facing forward. You've got to remember that when we're going to put the eyes in. We have to face them forward in those sockets there. The next job is the gory job, where we have to remove the eyes and the interior of the skull. Just do a little bit further down to here. We'll just pare away that a little bit more. Yeah just to make sure I've got plenty of room. So we're going to take out this area here and we're going to remove the, um, the tongue and the neck totally. There's no meat in there at all. We're going to slice through the back of the, the, the neck here, where the skull is here. And we're going to remove the contents of the head and the eyes. So let's start with the back of the skull here. I'll just slice down carefully around. It's quite, this is the only gory bit really. Um, you can see where the bird has been hit by the car here. The skull has been smashed. That was an instant death there. Right through there. That's the bird now removed and there's the tongue. That's, that bit's going out of the way now. We've got to recreate that part in polystyrene in a moment or in foam. We're going to use a different sort of foam in fact. Next part is to remove the interior here. Any, any mess at all has got to come out. And 
And this is where my tweezers come in handy. And get in there and start to lift all of this stuff out. There we go. Don't want any mess left in there at all. Just be cleaned up, no meat, just borax and bone or borax and skin, but no meat at all. Although a small amount of meat will dry, it's not a problem. We really don't want to have anything in there. We want to completely clean. You'll use a little bit of tissue in a minute and clean this out. Just chop all that out. If you don't eat meat, I quite understand. <coughs> That's your choice. I do like meat and I'm prepared to deal with it myself. Um, I don't force you to eat it and I therefore expect you not to ask me not to and I don't even know why you're watching this film if you have a problem with it. Right, we have to remove the back of the skull here now. To get the uh, grey matter out. So I'm just going to go in with a pair of scissors and just snip. There. It's quite surgical. Right the way around there, back of the skull. Remove that. And you can already see what we have to remove. So we'll go in with the knife and we'll just bring it out. This is the only mess that we're going to deal with. There's no other mess apart from the eyes. Not a pleasant job, but the pleasure really is in mounting it up, setting it up at the end. This is just a way to an end. So all of that out of there now. You can see we've just about got it clear. Again, if I can't quite reach in there, we'll use the tweezers. There we go. That's the lot out now, a little bit down there. And I'll just get some paper towel to clean out. The gloves are quite good for this particular job. We'll go in there now with the tweezers. Just clean everything up. See how it's all come out there now on the towel. So that's now nice and clean in there. One last little bit to make sure. I'm like a surgeon. Well, you wouldn't want me operating on you. And into that, then, straight away, we put some more borax and whilst I'm on this job, before I clean up fully, I'm going to take the eyes out. It won't be very hard. We just slice around the eye here, cutting the skin. And then go in with the tweezers and we should have just lifted all that in one go, like this. There we go, that's that one done. Again, clean up straight away. Don't want all the mess going anywhere. And straight away, put in some borax. Go to the other one, do the same. Borax in there. Now immediately, I've done all that borax, covered it really well. I'm going to put some fiberglass wool. It's not dangerous stuff, this is just the ordinary household lagging. It's much, much safer these days. So again, please don't write to me saying, oh, be careful about that. We're using such small amounts. Push those into there. Just to fill it up. So that the eye will sit in there properly. There we are. Well pushed in. Same this side. Put it right in there and fill up the underneath of the cavity here as well and in the brain now that's ready now to put the eyes in and try and bring the skin back over the top all in one go that's what we can do with that So here are my eyes, oh, here are the owl's eyes, usually I use wired ones, I haven't used this sort before, they look a little bit more 
clumsy. They've got uh, big old plastic pegs in them. I'm not uh, quite so keen on that. But they have to go into here facing forward. Like that. And this one the same, the other side. And of course they must be identical. There we go. And there's the owl's eyes facing forward. Now, if I can, I need to be able to pull this back through this way so that the beak comes through to me and I can get hold of it. Don't want to tear the bird's neck. This is a, get it. Be careful, as I said, at these stages, you don't want to tear the skin. So there's my finger going in, feeling down for the beak. I find the beak, I bring the beak out through here, there we are. So there's our owl, you can see now the eyes showing through there, the head's been pulled back across. Now I've just got to fluff it up, clean it up, and uh, use a hairdryer on that for a moment. Just clean them all up and put some more borax inside, make sure it's all lovely and dry. And then we've got to make the body from this. We've got to make a copy of that body. We'll just tidy up now. Right, here's our R laid out ready for the next process. We're now going to put some wires into the legs and wings. Um, ready for mounting it up because we want it to actually be supported by the wires. So the legs are going to go like that. The wings are going to come up and through. So I have to slip the wires to the right length for this, and I'm going to want to go right through the body when I make it. So they've got to be at least that long. I want to come up and through there, so I've got two of that length. Make them a bit longer than you think you want, it's safer. Two of that length. to leave the legs doing. Again I'm going to need them to go right through the body and out through the bottom of the feet. So I'm going to need again about two of the same sort of length like this. So that's my two legs. I'm also going to need one for the head. This is going to have to go right through the body and then into the head and through. So I'm going to go from about that sort of length and so I know I'm safe again. Right, that's my wires ready. So let's do the bird. We'll get those in in just a moment. Oh, one more tool I'm going to need. And this might seem a strange tool to have, but a knitting needle, because I need to be able to push in wool to the bottom of the leg here. And small amounts at the start and push them all the way down inside the leg. Traditional skills and, as I say, um, you don't need lots of fancy equipment or lots of massive chemicals or dangerous things. Just using borax, simple borax. And eventually we should end up with a really well padded leg like that. You can see it's all well padded in there. And when we stuff the legs, as you can see I have now, we need to do the wings the same. So I'm taking our fiberglass and I'm using the rounded end of the knitting needle now to push this up into here, feeling it. Right. So we've now made sure the wings are well padded out, the legs are done. What I have to do now is to push these wires down through the wings and up through the feet. Not going to be that easy, but we'll just make sure that we start off with a nice sharp point up there. I'll move this bird around a bit to see how I do this. Right to the top of the wing here, because we're going to need to bring this wing upwards later. We want to be able to get that so it looks like it's in flight and these wires are going to hide inside this bird's wing. And we've got to thread it down through the wing all the way down. Right, that wire now comes all the way down here inside the wing, right the way down and out through that glass wool that we put in here. I don't want too much at the end here, just a nice little hook. We bend that over that way. At the end just a work with later that it doesn't pull out. 
I have to do the same the other way now. Right, that's the two wings wired now. We need to do the feet. Through the feet, I've got to go in through the ball of the heel here, right up through the leg and out. So we'll push in through there. And I've got to work right up through the foot here, all the way through here. See it going through, feel for the end. Make sure it doesn't come through the skin anywhere else. There we go, pull the foot down over the wire. Pull the wire right up, like that. You don't need a lot of wire underneath, it's just enough to go through the branch, that's all. There we go. Another one. Again, right up and through until we come out the other end. Pull the leg down. Keep coming up. Make sure it's not twisted. Right up until it's almost there. And that's that part done. Right, the next is we've got to now make the body look the same as this one here. So I'm just going to use an ordinary kitchen knife for this. Nothing fancy. And we'll just look at the shape of it. Almost do it that way actually, but not quite. This bird slightly deformed, there we go, put it there. And I need to go straight down through there. Straight down through there. And take out a slight shape there, easy enough. Now, the bird comes right into here, but just pick up this end first. Good stuff this film. And we'll uh, take off these corners. Try it again. Almost there. Take off down to the tail. Put it into my table. Almost there. We've just about got that bird shape. That's giving me the basics. Rounded off slightly this way. And a bit more off here. No basic shape, I just want to go and sand it up There's the body. Up. What we've got to do is just um, pad that out a little bit now. I take a little bit more off, a little bit more off this side because the legs are going to be padded anyway. Neck wire through. Now, things like this, the neck has to go through. I'm going to pad that out more in a minute anyway. Through uh, here, all the way to the end. So right the way through quickly. And that, that end, we just bend it over with the pliers. Quite a big bend in it, like that. And we'll pull it back in. That's it. So now we've got that with the necks coming up. Now we need to know the length of the neck. The length of the neck. About that, and it comes forward a bit, so we know already we've got the shape of the thing. Up. You can see the shaping there. Very straightforward, isn't it? Like that. So a little bit of wool. And a wee bit of fiberglass just to make up the length of this neck. Just push that down through. 
and we'll just bind that on there. Right the way up, extend it out a bit. Remember that we've already put some wool in the back of the owl skull already. Don't want it too thick, it won't go up and through in a minute. Could have speed it through. There we go. And that's about the same thickness you see there as the neck of the owl, yeah. You can see it there. And we'll just tie that off. You can even leave the loose end on if we want, it won't really matter. There we go. Now that has to go up into the bird now. So we're going to go inside the neck here. Right up through there and through the back of the head and up through the centre of the skull, just in between these two bits here, out of the skin like that. The neck is right on, pull that over the neck, it goes right up and in there. And that's it, that's down to the, the wool now inside the neck. Now we've got the wings to put through. We've got to go through where the wings would go in there. Right the way through and again we need to bend them over and bring them back. Push them in, pull them back hard. This one the same comes in the other side. Down, that's it. And this side, it's going over there, it goes in here. Right up. And again, we bend it right back and push it in and pull it through. Now the legs. Looks a mess at the moment, but hopefully, in a, in a minute or Makes more sense. And the legs, we have to go in where the legs would go here. Right in through there. And through. And again. Bend them over. And bring them right back into the body. Use the pliers if you have to, to push them in. Same with that wing there that's coming out, we've got that right back inside. There we go. We don't want them pushing against the skin. Make it lump later. We're going to see it with a fluffy owl, but that means that leg can then be pushed up there more. Right the way through. Right the other side, and again, bring it through, bend it right back, and over. To come back into the body. Push it into the pliers if you have to because we do want them right inside that foam. Same with that wing, get it right in there. Just that they're firm and solid. There we go. All that lot are hidden in there now. The owl's moved up a bit, moving down. Right, it looks a bit strange, but we're getting there. Now we've got to bring the tail down and around here. Find the inside of that skin again. It has to be brought around the foam like this. There we go. So now the tail fits onto there, and we're actually ready to stitch off. You can see how the bird's wing now is starting to to work. So here we go, 
we can now pull that head down and go and find some fishing line and a needle to stitch this back up again. Right, the final part, stitching up. I like to double up my fishing line. I've got about a five pound test here. Should be enough with about one foot uh, ten, something like that there. And I like to start at the top end, the neck, and work my way down. So we're going to start up here. We've already got the neck pulled through. And come through here. Carefully. Pull it up just tight, gently at first, because we want to get that knot to hold. Through there, through there. And then I do a series of loops down. I don't get it caught up in its claw. And every time I go through now, I shall double it back onto itself. I'm not happy about that. The wing keeps coming and through there. What's that? So, just work my way down the bird. Going through. And that should be done. I just need to tie it up a little bit. Just a little bit, to say the least. To get the old hair dryer onto it and pull the skin round and fluff the feathers up, clean it up. And we want to bend the um, the legs. And we want to try and keep the bones going the same way as uh, they do on the real owl. So I'm going forward, back, and then forward again at the knee joint, and that gives me the correct position for those legs. We need to set it up on a branch so that I can actually mount it up properly. But you see, it's actually coming together quite well now. Right, I want this bird to be on here. I think I'm going to put it slightly sideways like that. So I'm going to drill through here and here with the drill. And the same one as this corner here. Now, good luck, that one will go through there, like that. And this one will come through here. The fluff out of the way, there we go. Bring the feet round, it's just landing on there, pull them down tight. back for the moment just to hold it there for that temporarily like that grasping there now I've got to just bring the bird into a more natural position for landing No, it's just a matter of shaping the bird, getting it right on the stand. One of the last things to do is just to cut a little piece of wire in a key shape like this, and that's going to go underneath the tail to hold it up slightly. We can have it whatever position we want then, but we want to get this just pushed in to the back side of the bird here, right in there. And the feathers will fluff over it, but it will Oh, just hold this tail up and we can spread it. Like that. And the fluffy bits will go over it. It means we can just spread that tail out to look beautiful like that. Pull back the feathers. And now we're starting to get an owl that opposed to it. Well it's looking quite good now, just uh, use tidying up a bit, letting dry up a bit in that position I think. Just 
to reset some things at the tail and there's a twist of the body here and there. I think it's quite nice like that to a corner of the room. And it shows you just how simply a bird like this can be done. And those are the basics, so I shall tidy up a bit more yet. Yeah.